So good, good morning. Uh, welcome from Beyond Limits. Just wanted to share, share a testimony and how things happen uh, sometimes. Uh, and you, you don't know that there's a divine appointment from God uh, in the making. So, uh, Ron, you, you and Jan were driving down, like, you were running errands, right? We were running errands and uh, several errands uh, in, related to my uh, tinnitus. And uh, I've been struggling with this. And uh, I had no intention of coming to see you. <laughs> but my wife was a, a former patient here and you helped her greatly, you helped my daughter. And uh, Jan said I made a wrong turn. And uh, I said, uh, Jan, the wrong turn. And she said, we're headed toward Dr. Jess. I said, just keep going. I think Dr. Jeff might be able to help me. Now, in the morning, we had no intention of coming here, but that's where we ended up, and it was a great decision to make. Well, I mean, I'm so glad you, you got that gut, good gut intuition and that radar that be led by God. And uh, Well, we, we, we do give God the credit, and, and God uses people like you, and, and God directs us according to his will for our life, and it, it was just kind of a God thing. It happened, and I'm glad it did, and uh, God's in charge. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, we're on watch constantly every week. We uh, have very interesting cases. So what was the tinnitus like, and like, what was the severity? What was, uh, what, what was it? Uh, what were you experiencing? Yeah, what were you experiencing? Well, Dr. Jeff, you care if I mention how it all began, just briefly? Sounds great. Okay, yep. my, I have an autistic daughter who's 38 years of age, and uh, her name's Rachel. And uh, we brought her home for Christmas to spend uh, a few, uh, a couple of days with us. And it's, it's a struggle and, um, mm -hmm. uh, to have her around because she has these episodes, and, but we love her, she's part of the family. She was having one of her episodes and she was breaking stuff, turning lamps over, and mm -hmm. I grabbed her and uh, just to calm her down just put my, wrap my arms around her and then she fell to the ground and I fell and we fell together. So I recall it was a pretty hard spill and then we began to roll around until she was kind of calm. And then that was in the afternoon, I think of uh, December the 19th or so. And then uh, about uh, a few hours later, uh, you know, that night, one or two o'clock in the morning, maybe three o'clock, all of a sudden I woke up and, and I heard this sound I'd never heard before. Never had ringing in the ears, never. I were hearing aids, uh, you know, I have a hearing loss, but never, uh, never ringing in the ears. And so I, I, I couldn't tell where the sound was coming from. I thought it was a heating system. I thought it was a sound machine. I, I walked around the house and said, what is this sound? And then finally I said, you know, it's inside my head. And, uh, and so I woke up the next morning and told Jan and we took it from there. And I, I had never, I didn't know what tinnitus was. That shows how innocent I was. I had no clue. I, I, I've heard of ringing the ears of tinnitus to me. I've, I've never met anybody with it, although millions of people have it. And all of a sudden, I've got it. And so you have to deal with it as best you can. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. So what was it uh, keeping you from doing? You said something with the well, sleep. What kept me from sleeping? That's the main thing. I, I think I, I could deal with it somewhat mm -hmm. um, during the day because there are noises around that kind of filter that out and kind of mask it. But in a quiet uh, room at night when you're trying to sleep, it, it, you hear it. it. It was like a chirping sound, like a cricket. And, and sometimes it was like a, just a ringing, and it wouldn't go away. And uh, I tried to sleep. Uh, first few nights I didn't sleep much. And you know, you really can't function when you can't sleep. You need, you need to be able to sleep. And I've always been a sleeper, right? I mean, I go to bed in five minutes, I'm gone. And uh, that's a great thing. It's always been like that. I sleep all night. I've never had any problem. Mm -hmm. I've been sleeping in the recliner. I've been sleeping with a noise machine right next to my ear, turned up high volume just to mess that thing. And still it was a struggle. Some nights I got a few hours, uh, and, uh, but it wasn't quality sleep. It wasn't good sleep, but you still struggle mm -hmm. with that. I've been to uh, the experts, so-called. I've been to the ENTs. Um, in fact, my doctor uh, said, you need to see an ENT. And somebody else said, well, you just need to go to ENT. So I went to an ENT. I didn't even know what an ENT was. I said, what's an ENT? They said, ear, nose, and I said, okay, maybe this guy can help me. Actually, it was a lady, and I went in and, and talked to her. She said, really, we give you no hope. I, I mean, that, she didn't use those words. 
but that was the message she came across. She said, we really can't help you. This might be a, a disability you have to deal with for the rest of your life. And uh, you know, that's, that's not good. Because when there's no hope, you, you feel almost paralyzed. What do you do with no hope? And so um, she sent me back to my family physician for uh, sleep aid and sleeping pills, I suppose, and uh, which I'm not going to take because I know that's dangerous. I know the uh, habit forming and the long-term effects, which are not good. So I began taking supplements. The ENT lady told me, she said, for the supplements or vitamins that probably aren't going to help you. So everything I was doing, she shot down. And uh, on the way here this morning, I had all of these appointments and I canceled everything. I, I canceled acupuncture. Some, somebody had me going to acupuncture. I canceled MRI, which I don't think I need. Uh, I just canceled everything, so I, I'm. Uh, that's why I'm coming here. You got me, and, and the results is what matters. You go where there's results, and uh, if, if you don't give me results, I go somewhere else. And so I had a, a good night's sleep last night. I came in last night for a chiropractic treatment that lasted uh, oh just a few minutes, and, and uh, an initial uh, con you know consultation with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I slept pretty good last night. At first, I, I was excited because I didn't hear the, the sound, but then my mind said, you know, that's probably going to come back, so don't get your hopes up too high. But then uh, it, it didn't come back like it had. I, I'm not sure I'm 100% yet, but I'm making progress, so I'm moving in the right direction. And there's always hope. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you, Doc. Oh, my pleasure. And thank you, Juanita. You're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's... Um, you know, there's uh, lots of root causes uh, to tinnitus, but we did a detailed uh, exam and, um, and we found that there was a misalignment in the brain stem when he hugged his daughter and tried to just hold her to calm her down and then they went over and fell. It caused a misalignment in the neck up in the upper part around the brain stem which the nerves go to the ears, the eyes, and um, can cause tinnitus if there is a misalignment from a fall. So I was, I was uh, once I did the exam, I was like, that, that's it right there. There's the root cause. Uh, and um, the evidence was my neck was off, right? I mean, the, the, the brain, everything was off up here above the neck. Yes, right at C1, the first cervical vertebrae, C2, um, those go to uh, the auditory nerves, the nerves that go to the eyes, they go to the ears. And so that's where the primary misalignment that was putting the compressive pressure on the nerve that is now going to affect the, the ear, the organ. Chiropractic is very much an organ nerve relationship. Mm -hmm. It's not just for pain. Chiropractic was originally designed for function and improving function. And so that's, you know, an important message that people uh, need to know about and rule out and consider a very logical and rational option when there is some sort of functional or abnormal functioning as ringing in the ears. It's not always 100% the cause, but for sure it is, uh, you just got to listen to the case history if you listen close enough and then you do it detailed exam you can you can a lot of times this ha this happens all the time in the office um, we've yeah so um, this is just one adjustment mm -hmm. okay one visit last night and how much is the ringing reduced substantially I, I don't know uh, I, I'm sure I can put a number on it but uh, it's it's I don't hear much of anything but, but I, I, my mind tells me there's I don't know, I've heard it for so long now, three weeks, it just feels like in the back of my mind I can still hear that clicking, <laughs> but I'm not sure it's there. Right? Uh, I'm, I'm, yes, there's some confusion about it, but I'm making progress and I'm, I'm on the right road. Let me ask you a question. Why is it that the mm -hmm. medical establishment, they demonstrate suspicion toward people like you? Yeah, no, that's a super good question. I feel there's like been so much uh, misinformation uh, that I, I, I feel like mo most of the ducks don't even know what we do in the office. Mm -hmm. um, and this stuff happens all the time. 
So I think it's just a difference in approach and training. Uh, we're trained differently. Um, we're trained differently in the way we look at things and, and really our approach. So I, I just think it's a lack of information. I have MDs in the clinic and they're like, hey, when are we going to bring the two fields together for the greater good uh, for, for the humans? We have lots of MDs that, that, that say that who are patients in here for neuropathy or, huh. and um, mm -hmm. yeah. You have ENTs who come in here. Uh, not ENTs, but we, we have With all MD. sorts of primary mm -hmm. care uh, okay. medical yep. doctor providers that come in. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, everybody, when you're taught a certain way, that's all we know. Mm -hmm. You know, we only know the way we're, we're taught, so it's hard for the information to get out there. Yes. Um, but when you come into an office and, and you see the science and you, see, you understand the approach... Um, the MDs, the, the, you know, we learn from them, they learn from us, and then the ultimate goal is that the patients have results like this. And uh, I just think it's just a matter of information and, and mm -hmm. training. We're all trained differently. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to come together and, and to really help people have uh, the best of both worlds because patient care and uh, patient improvement, they, I know the MDs, feel the same way that's the that's mm -hmm. our ultimate goal is uh, it's it's patient outcomes and patient results let me share one thing I just turned 70 uh, just days ago and uh, I've been busy all my life uh, I'm in the ministry I'm a Baptist pastor very busy in fact next week I'll be teaching at uh, the local Bible college I've been to that for 22 years but when this happened I thought to myself I feel like I'm gonna have to give up everything because uh, it just slows you down so much. I mean, how can you function? How can you teach? How can you mm -hmm. preach? How can you, how can you live with this? And so I think the key is, like you said, just results. Uh, if you help me see results, then I'm coming back, mm -hmm. and, and I, I trust you. Mm -hmm. I even trust her. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, I mean, it's easy to trust. I I'm a little scared. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. No, that's what it, that's all about. We're all learning. We're everybody's in the process of acquiring more and more data and information as we go, as things evolve. And and so, thank you. We know we don't take that trust lightly. Mm -hmm. We try to earn that every single day with every single one of our patients. And mm -hmm. um, we're we're really trying to take people beyond limits, beyond what people were aware of. Um, that was available to them, but that's that's really all that happens inside this week. We, we we take people beyond limits, and we learn new things, and we have celebrate new victories with uh, videos, and and everybody learns. I think, yep, yes. So thank you for trusting us and well, uh, and coming in and going with your gut intuition. You know, thank you for helping me. Thank you for helping my dear wife of forty three years, and thank you for helping my daughter Joy. Yes. yes, and uh, I would have never learned about you had it not been for them. So, Aww. I don't know how Joy found out about you, but she did. I'm not sure. Yeah, we. Had... She just got online and researched. Oh well. <laughs> there he was. There he was. <laughs> <laughs> there he was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's a family affair at Beyond Limits. Um, lots of lots of victories and health improvements. So please like and share this with. Um, your friends, mm -hmm. your workers, uh, and your family members, because you might be pleasantly surprised, like Ron uh, was, uh, that there, there are different options and different approaches. So, uh, yep, this happens all the time. So I think you deal with a lot of skeptical people, don't you, probably? Skepticism at times. It's yeah. almost every day. <laughs> you know, it's, it's almost every day we... And yes. I, I would have to admit, it, at times I've been skeptical in the past, but uh, you, you get beyond that. When you get desperate, you do what you probably wouldn't normally do, you know what I'm saying? And so if, if you're skeptical out there, give it a try. And if you're desperate, certainly this is something that may be of great help to you. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. All okay. right. Thanks, Juanita. We've Thanks, lived in Jan. five states. He yeah. knows all kinds of people. So when he shares this on Facebook, it's going to go all over America.